Hello and welcome to our presentation. We'll be presenting to you what we have achieved through Guild Actions over the past few weeks. So I'm Shiva Misa, accompanied by Ziad Ahmed. We have both graduated in software engineering through Nottingham Trent University, who have provided us this internship uh, scheme. I further then graduated in software development in a master's. And we're now currently here at uh, Nottingham uh, Hospital, University Hospital, the NHS Trust. And we've been assigned this project to basically understand how Guild of Actions works. Is it a viable solution for version control for the NHS? And yeah, so we'll be basically going, going through and understanding the process. So what is Guild of Actions? Guild of Actions is a automated tool that helps with automating everyday tasks like testing, building, deploying, and vice versa. It's a tool built into GitHub itself. And the benefits of having GitHub Actions is that it helps save time as it eliminates the manual labor, helps keeps project organized, and it prevents mistakes. So what I mean by prevents mistakes is that, for example, if you are pushing a file to the repository, if, if there's any errors within that file, for example, if there's a Python file and you have errors in your code, it will first check to see if the code is stable. If not, it will uh, it will highlight all those mistakes that have been made in those uh, in that file before uh, merging with the code base. So that is what I mean by preventing mistakes. So how does Gilb Action work in the repository? So there are three key terms, triggers. Triggers are something or events, and these are events that are triggered on specific moments. For example, if you specified your action to trigger on a push, pull, or a issue creation, it will then respond with a workflow file. And within the workflow file, there is something called actions or or steps or tasks or whatever you like to call them and these are a response to the trigger or the push of the file and it will apply that workflow file onto the file that you pushed or pulled or wherever the trigger is or the event so that's how it works so how the how are they now applied so in Gulp actions it uses a yaml yet under the markup language, that's what it stands for. And this is a syntax that is used to define these workflow files. And with these workflow files, you can uh, use it to create various um, various actions, such as uh, creation for automated testing, continuous uh, integration, deployment automation, and it helps with code quality checks, as I mentioned before, too. Not only can you create your own, but you can also uh, take um, pre-coded solutions from something called the GitHub Market. And with the GitHub Market, it is a marketplace where you can access various different um, actions that you may use. For example, if you want to test if a certain version of Python is installed or Python itself is installed, you can find this in the marketplace. And with Marketplace, it's a reliable source as it helps to save time, as you don't need to do the manual labor yourself. Uh, there's someone who has already come up with this template and you can retrieve it. It's reliable as it's open source. So many developers work together to ensure that their actions are uh, tested and outputting correctly. And it's really easy to use so you can literally grab a piece of code that you want from the marketplace and copy it into your own file or you can even use the template that they have provided so the guild actions also works with various other third-party applications uh, it has support of hundreds of programming languages so you can find java python r uh, even frameworks like asp.net or node.js they are all GitHub, github actions works with various tools is very versatile in that sense. And not only does it work with programming languages, it also works with um, services like Azure and Amazon Web Service. 
And each time, for example, in your repository, you have pushed a file, uh, action has been triggered, it's failed or passed, it will notify you via email to, to inform you that this action has been run on this time and this is the outcome of it. So now I'll pass on to Ziad, who will explain more about the running costs of Guild Actions. Thank you, Shivam. So when we first uh, started this project, we were using the free plan for the organization that GitHub provides. So in the free plan, it, uh, the minutes included were 2000 per month for both Windows and Ubuntu. However, for Mac OS, you required uh, to pay for it so that you can use it. The storage included was about 500 megabytes of storage. The context of minutes and storage in this case is the amount, the total amount of minutes you have. You can run a workflow for four and the storage you have in case of the storage you need. Uh, GitHub Actions also provides, uh, sorry, GitHub also provides uh, for different paid plans. So you have the GitHub Team paid plan, which has about, uh, I guess, 3,000 minutes per month uh, with a storage of two gigabytes. The GitHub Enterprise paid plan uh, provides about 50,000 minutes per month and 50 GB storage per month. So you can see that, you know, GitHub Actions actually, GitHub provides a lot of different uh, payment plans as well. They're quite unique. Before we move on, there's also a lot of considerations uh, we can we found out that needs to be considered uh, when in a paid plan, for example. Uh, for example, the minutes and storage are shared across all repos in the in the organization. So usually uh, each repo doesn't have its own minutes and storage. They are, they're all shared all together. If you ex if you're in a paid plan and you exceeded the limits, let's say a GitHub team plan and you exceeded the 3000 payment limit, uh, you have to you don't it doesn't really stop that your service doesn't stop it just adds on uh it charges you the extra minutes you cost to use at the end of each billing cycle you can also github also provides a really nice way to monitor your usage and you can find that in the billing and billings and plans in the settings uh, so this is a really interesting thing we found about github uh, actions is that if you run a workflow for let's say a minute or let's say sorry a 50 seconds or about let's say 10 seconds github would always round it up to a minute so even if it's five seconds it would round up to one minute and if you run a workflow for about a minute and 30 seconds it will always round up to two minutes which is something that we found really interesting so uh this is how many minutes each job uses so this is an estimate we did before we went to the actual testing so for example in a python project you can see a hello world script will take less than a minute but for let's say a small Python project, it will take about three to five minutes. For an R project, similar to a Python project, uh, the hello world will obviously take less than a minute, but for like, let's say an R project, a small R project will take about three to six minutes because libraries like let's say GGP plot two might take enough, it might take more time to uh, load up. Storage wise, uh, for the Python, a basic project with small scripts and testing will take about 50 to 100 kilobytes. The catch dependencies might take about 50 to 100 kilobytes as well. However, for our plot, our project, since it has a lot of plots, it will take about uh, 50 to 150 kilobytes. And in the case of artifacts, in the context of artifacts, artifacts are usually uh, files or data that you want to store on your local PC or you want to download. So, for example, in an R project, it will be a plot. Let's say in a Python project, uh, it will be, let's say, a table, for example. Uh, usually, artifacts are the output of the code that you want to store. Attached libraries are in this in this context are the libraries you want to store in in GitHub itself. So these libraries, instead of downloading, let's say Python, uh, let's say you download the Python once with the dependencies, you only have to do it once. You don't have to do it uh, more than once. This obviously will help you save minutes and storage. So these are the general limitations of uh, of a workflow. Uh, obviously, these differ between each plan. So a, a maximum job runtime is about six hours. This is for all plans. Uh, similar to the workflow duration, uh, it's the duration limit for, is a maximum, can run for a maximum of 35 days. And this is for all plans. The concurrent jobs, which are jobs that can run uh, parallel to each other. So the free tire, it provides uh, 20 jobs. GitHub team, 60 jobs. And GitHub enterprise, 180 jobs. So. There are benefits for obviously using the paid plan. Obviously, there's more benefits than getting more minutes in storage. Uh, for example, they're scalable. 
So GitHub team and GitHub Enterprise are both scalable for both small teams and large enterprises. They're quite, uh, cost effective. So uh, since you have two payment plans, you can choose whenever that's suited for your needs. Uh, they obviously provide more security features than the, the default plan, which is a free plan. They allow flexibility with their plans. So let's say you went uh, above your limit, you'd, instead of just the service stopping, it just adds up to your uh, billing cycle, uh, billing uh, charges, so which is quite flexible. You also get priority support since you're paying, you get your customer support is more prioritized than someone, let's say, who's using the free plan. So to summarize all of this, we've uh, we've seen that GitHub Actions obviously offers a range of plans suited for different organization sizes. The free and paid plans obviously cater to both different types of teams, whether it's large or small. Uh, you can all monitor your usage to ensure that you uh, allocate resources effectively. Now I'm moving on to GitHub. Uh, I'm going to hand it over to Shivam to explain more about GitHub Actions. Thank you, Ziad. So with GitHub Actions, there's some general information that you should be aware of. So GitHub Actions works uh, the same regardless of what program language you use, as I mentioned before. So it's, in, it's, it, it's versatile in that sense. The only difference is when you're uh, using these different program languages uh, is when you set up the file. So as uh, different program language, programming languages use different packages, it's vital that you ensure that you are using those packages that work well with those specific programming languages. You also must define which uh, operating system that, uh, the actions will be designed for. So this could be Windows, Ubuntu, Mac OS. And also actions, uh, they cannot be hidden. They So they have their own directory uh, within the repository. And they sit in the directory known as the workflow directory. And within, these, and within this directory, there are all the workflows. So it's public for others to see. So uh, there are a few key terms that you should be familiar with when using GitHub Actions. Name is a key term for labeling the workflow or the job. A job is a collection of steps or tasks that need to be run. And within the job, there are nested uh, keywords such as on to define Sorry, run uh, on is used to define the trigger to uh, establish what sort of workflow file this would be, such as a push for if a file has been pushed, it will react to that, and if it's a pull, it will react to that in that way, in that manner. And within the within that within inside the job, it has uh, key terms like um, steps, which uh, are the list of tasks that will be performed. Uh, with will be uh, the keyword to specify what sort of version uh, the language, programming language will use. Build is used to compile the code and run is to execute the commands that will be replying to that event. So GitHub Actions uh, also uses something called runners. A runner refers to something known as a machine or a server. And GitHub has two types of runners. So you have a GitHub hosted runner, and the benefits of this is that you you don't need to set up anything as it's already uh, integrated within GitHub. So all you need to do is just use it. However, with the limitations that come along with this is that you need to pay and there's limited customizations and limited resources within the GitHub hosted runner. But there's also something called a self-hosted runner. And with a self-hosted runner, uh, it allows you to take full control of the environment uh, and however you want to use it. But the only drawback to that is that it requires regular maintenance and regular management of your uh, environment. So we'll be going through a few case examples uh, to show you how exactly GitHub Actions works. So this example is a automated testing process and you can see here it uses a basic structure it de defines the name of what the workflow file will be called uh, you can see on defining the trigger or the event that it will react to so in this case is a push and then inside of jobs there are a bit of nested uh, keywords so test is the name of the task that it will run beneath so you can see runs on 
is the OS system that's been defined. The steps are the list of tasks that will be now be used to execute. So Actions has its own version of checkout and it has its own version of setup. And underneath the checkout uh, is using the latest version of checkout and latest version of uh, setup. And underneath the checkout, it's defining a name to list the next task that will be run. So in this case, it's setting up node JS and is using the keyword with to specify which version of Node.js is using. And then the last two commands are running the install and the test to ensure that the file is working. The next example is a continuous integration example. And within, th within this example, similar to the last, is defining the name, the event, which is going to react to. So in this case, it's a push. And inside of jobs, it's got a task called build and test. So it's running on the latest Ubuntu system again. It's using the latest version of checkout and setup. Again, it's naming the task setup Node.js, and but instead of using version 16, it's using version 18, the specified with the keyword with. And then you got the extra tasks at the end. So you got install, the and then you have run, which will uh, run the build, and then it will then test to ensure that everything is still correctly working. So now we'll go through a live demonstration of how exactly GitHub Actions works. Uh, it, this will be a mix of both Python and R, and it will just show you the basics of how GitHub Actions works in a repository. Thank you, Shiva. I'll be the one starting first for the first demonstration. So the first one we will be demonstrating is a K number checker. It will check if there's any of these K numbers within a script, in this case, a Python script. So you can see in the code, we first made it into a comment and into a variable and lastly into a function. So let's go over to the YAML file. As Shivam explained earlier, we can see the name. The name is check for hard coded K numbers. We have the on trigger. So in this case, it works similar to the on push, but this time we specified a path. So what this will do is that every time a user pushes a Python script, it will run this YAML file. If someone, let's say, pushes a text file or a R script, it will never run this uh, workflow because it only runs when someone pushes a Python file. So as you see, this is the job. This is the name for the job. It runs on the Windows latest since we're all using a Windows environment. It has to run on Windows. Uh, this is the checkout code. Shivam explained earlier, checkout v4. So this part is where the code is. So since we're using Windows, we have to use a PowerShell. So in this function, what this uh, variable holds is that it uses a, a regex or a regular expression called select string, which looks for all the string with a specific pattern in a Python file. Hence why the Python, uh, the Python script, the file. Uh, it uses the pattern function to, to specify the pattern. So in this case, we have the K, which is case sensitive, uh, and with a number from zero to nine and seven characters excluding the K, and it will just show all the matches. So this function is a fit if statement. In this if statement, we're checking if the forbidden k, the k numbers, are found in the script. So if they're found, uh, a message will output saying the, the following hard-coded k numbers were found, and it will print out every single k number in the script. So in our case, it's about three to four, just to show the user where they're located or where the error is, and it will exit one. Uh, hence, it will just uh, fail the workflow intentionally. If there's no K, uh, if no K numbers, it will just immediately uh, it print out this message, and I will just show the job running. So you can see here the output for the job. So you can see here we're setting up the job. Uh, you can see here setting up the job. We're checking out the code. It checked out the code from the repo. Now this is where the error is. It scans all the K numbers, and then it outputted, it found a K number and it outputted the error. It, showed, it outputted every single K number in the script and it gave us an error. And obviously this is just a, a post checkout code and cleaning up all the processes, the previous processes. And now I'll hand it over to Shivam to explain uh, the R test, the second script. So we, I defined a basic function in R, which will be 
is printing out a hello world as a result. And to test that assert works through GitHub Actions, we created an assert to test that result should equal to hello world as a result and print. And if this assert is true, it will then print out this um, print message saying test has passed. And essentially, it's just a basic function to test a test. So you can see here, this is the script that uh, we created. So each time a file is pushed onto the main branch, it will then uh, trigger this workflow, which will use the latest version of Windows, latest version of checkout and setup for R specifically. And you can see here on line 29, it specified that it will use the latest version of R. So once that has been specified, it then goes ahead and creates a label for running the script to test the string function. And then you can see here, it sets up the job. It is then running the checkout to, uh, to check the file from the repository, sets up R, and then you can see here that it outputs successfully and it prints out the print message to, to tell that the test has passed. Thank you, Shivam. So moving on, uh, we're going to summarize all we said. We created multiple actions for Python and R. Uh, below are the Python functions, uh, the R, the scripts that we never mentioned. So we have the Python and R install checker. We also did a code, a code formatter for both Python and R, and it will format the code uh, based on the latest guidelines for both Python and R, and it does this automatically. Once this workflow uh, runs, it will automatically format both Python and R uh, to the latest guidelines. And obviously we have another assert function for testing the addition of two numbers in Python. Then a third function for testing a string function output in R, which Shivam explained earlier. We also have a, a checking for package dependencies and if all the files are included. This is where this was done in both Python and R. Then obviously have the K number checker, which I just explained earlier. And finally, the word name checker. And this reads a date, uh, uh, reads data from a text file in the repo. This was done in Python. Now we've uh, when we started this project, we wanted to log our uh, data consumed per day. So for the first day, which was for this project, which was on the fifth of September, twenty twenty four, we had thirty four commits, one hundred and two workflow runs in total, and two hundred and forty minutes consumed with six uh, total scripts. The next day, we had forty eight commits and three hundred and thirty eight workflow runs in total and 166 minutes consumed with seven, a total of seven scripts. On the 11th of uh, September, 2024, we had 23 commits, 557 workflow runs in total, 448 minutes uh, consumed with a total of eight scripts. And on the last day, which is around the 12th of August, uh, September, we had seven commits, 639 workflow uh, total workflow runs and 484 uh, minutes consumed with a total of 10 scripts just to give a reminder that the commits are not in total these are the commits done per day and so as the minutes as well these are the minutes consumed on that day so we're going to over some uh, go over some key advice we found so the first thing we found that a GitHub Actions allows uh, uh, security integration through auto merging. So let's say you want to make sure the workflow is passed before you merge. Uh, GitHub Actions has a functionality that allows that. We also included the steps there. We uh, the advantage is obviously for using this is that you can have all the status checks passing before you merge, which obviously reduces the introduction of uh, bugs into the production code. You also have a control environment since you allow only authorized individual to verify the code so because they can they're the only ones that can like merge the changes so you obviously minimize the risk of having someone who's unauthorized marriage uh that would end up merging unverified code which will damage the sensitive branches this obviously has to be done manually so this is our understanding from this project or the findings we found that run and commit in GitHub Actions are two concepts, uh, two different concepts. 
run refers to obviously running a script and commit refers to updating the changes in a file. Uh, when you, if you want to avoid uh, running a workflow and you don't want to delete it, you can just comment out uh, the action and the whole, like the action, the YAML file. This obviously would avoid running the execution, which saves you minutes and storage. If you want to read from a text file, you don't have to, uh, you don't have to create another, uh, you don't have to place the text file in the uh, workflow repository, uh, the workflow directory. Since when you create a workflow, GitHub itself creates a directory for you. So you can place it anywhere in the repo and GitHub would read it. If you wanna, if you want actions, uh, let's say if you wanna in uh, run, if you want GitHub actions to ignore certain files when you're running a workflow or when you're committing, for let's say you committed a readme file, you can use the path uh, ignore the file name uh, for a function, which will basically ignore any commits made on that file. So every time you commit, let's say a readme file, GitHub actions will not run that specific workflow. Obviously, this is different from git ignore, but you can still use git uh, git ignore and its functions through actions. Obviously, we face a lot of challenges when doing this project because we never really used a GitHub actions before. So one of the challenges we, uh, was that we were limited on minutes. And the fact that when you program a YAML file, it has to be based on the on the environment you're using or on the OS you're using. Since we were using Windows on this, we had to use PowerShell, which is something that me and Shivam never really used before. Uh, however, we've used to code in uh, Linux based machines, which is bash. So GitHub doesn't allow that. So if you have a Windows, you have to code in PowerShell. You cannot test obviously a workflow before committing. So let's say you want to test a workflow before committing it, you have to uh, commit it first just to see if it works. Hence why we mentioned that to avoid running a workflow, you can comment out uh, its contents. There's a lot of redundancy in actions and GitHub action itself has a learning curve to it since most of the documentation is found on GitHub. If you want any other source of documentation, even Stack Overflow might be a bit limited. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of limitations to GitHub Actions. These are the things, main things we found is that there's obviously no automated way to check if there's a specific file type like a text file or SQL file. So the only way you can do this through Git Ignore. So meaning that let's say you wanna check if that someone is pushing a certain file before committing, you can't really automate that. GitHub Action doesn't allow you to do that. Uh, GitHub Action might not support the latest version of a programming language from time to time. And as you can see, the UI wasn't really helpful. It was really bad actually. And most of the time the, the error message were not helpful. Sometimes we ran into issues where the entire YAML file would break just for because of a slight indentation that it won't even show. Sometimes job runtimes can run for longer periods of time, even though you're just say running a hello world script, it can take like two minutes for some reason. Uh, and obviously, as we said, there's no available way to test one workflow. So if you want to test a single workflow, you have to run all workflows, which obviously costs might be at the cost of using minutes and storage. You cannot obviously create actions that do manual tasks like merging and pull requests. You have to, uh, you can't automate that. To conclude this presentation, this is what we found. So we found that limited minutes meant limited commits. Uh, it has to, uh, meaning that you have to use uh, GitHub effectively. Uh, it's also good for automating everyday tasks like testing solutions before merging to the main code base. As, as Shiva mentioned earlier with the marketplace, there's a lot of different templates and reusable code that you can use, saving a lot of development time. And as we mentioned, GitHub Actions cannot block commits. It cannot do that. The only way to do that is that by adding force checks before passing it. Summarize everything and round it up what we just said. Uh, GitHub Action obviously pr uh, provides it's, vers it's versatile to use and has support for many different languages. It can automate most of the workflows. It's open source, so you can find a lot of reusable code to avoid redundancies. Uh, certain tasks like uh, merges and commits cannot be converted into an automated tasks. Uh, you cannot enforce actions unless through you manually check it. And obviously, different plans has different organizations organizational needs, as you just saw with the payment plans. 
again, thank you. Thank you, you for wanna, watching the presentation. Yeah, thank you. If you want to access our repo, this is the link. And yeah, thank you.